السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Okay. So today I'm going to you know discuss a problem before you. And since every problem has a name, I'll also name this. And uh, the name will be mass on a moving line. This is the name of the problem. A mass on a moving wedge. So for this, uh, I have my system will consist of two things. One is an inclined plane. Okay. In the uh, inclined at an angle theta will be horizontal. That will be the ground. And I have a block of mass m, which has been set up, which has been set here on purpose so that it move down the incline and here the gravity is acting downwards we are being acting downwards so yeah, i shall you know uh, modify the problem okay with various types of kinematical constraints as we proceed along but uh, as a warm up ex exercise okay let me uh, begin by uh, saying that we see this wedge is fixed and uh, only this mass m is moving. Okay, then what is its acceleration? It is just a warm up exercise. You know, like you know, you have football players, they do a warm a warm up exercise before going to the final, you know, play. So like this, before we go, go to the final play, let us do a warm up exercise. So you take this to be fixed. Okay, by the way, the friction here is new. Okay. Uh, so this is fixed. And uh, this is moving downwards. So, with what acceleration it is moving, we have to find out. Okay. So, uh, how to do this? Okay. Look there. Uh, you assume that this uh, block uh, of mass smaller is moving downwards. Okay, is moving downwards with an acceleration, uh, say, a dash, a prime. So, uh, if it is mass m. Let me isolate this body and uh, say this is mass smaller and this is angle theta, this is the weight mg okay, which is acting downwards and if you resolve this, this will be theta and this will be mg sin theta and this will be mg cos theta. So since there is no upward motion, so I can write mg sin theta is equal to m a prime so a prime is equal to g sin theta so with this acceleration uh, this block of mass model is moving downwards okay now let me you know uh, let me uh, uh, introduce another idea let me introduce the force f naught which is acting on this incline and i am asking what should be the value of f naught such that okay well, such that uh, this mass m and f moves together so it will be like this okay this is m and this is m this is theta i am asking what there is a force f naught acting on this system and here i am uh, asking you that what should be the value of f naught such that this mass m and f moves together so this diagram can be redrawn as Like this, this is mass m plus m. So, if this is so, what should be the value? So, f naught should be equal to let the system move with an acceleration capital A and plus m into capital A. But you see, here f naught is being asked you have to find out f naught, and so is a. We don't know the value of a. So, let us try to find out. Okay, let me uh, do one thing. Uh, Let me draw the free body diagram for small m. Okay. So the normal force which is acting on this body okay, is like this upwards, which is m. And this normal force is being provided by this mass capital M and its weight is mg. There is this angle theta, this will be mg cos theta, and this will be mg sin theta. Now, uh, 
means uh, this system is moving towards towards the right. Okay, with an acceleration a, we can resolve this m. We can resolve this m. Okay, uh, we can resolve this m, and what we get is like this. Okay, this, this is theta. When this is theta, this is m sine theta, and this is m cos theta. So what can I say from here is m sine theta will be equal to m a. and m cos theta because the system is moving with one acceleration okay with a common acceleration and m cos theta m cos theta is upwards okay it will be equal to m b so if you, you know, uh, right, finally you will reach what you will get is a is equal to b m theta so this is what you are getting put the value of a in this equation and you get it now So, F0 must be equal to M plus M into G tan theta. Okay. So, this is what you will get. Just check. Okay. So, that was uh, uh, for, you know, uh, that was a warm up exercise for you. Now, we, okay, by the way, here the relative motion are zero. There was no relative motion between the block and the wedge. Okay. Now what I do is, I want a very interesting thing. I want to uh, bring, you know, um, relative motion, okay, to this picture. So that what, now the question is, if I bring relative motion to this picture, if the wedge is also moving and the block is also moving, then what should be the value of the kinematical constraints? Okay, so let us try to find out. So, uh, since uh, we have done our warm-up warm exercise, now let us start the main problem, the problem which I am interested in. Now what I do is, I am telling you that uh, we have the wedge and the mass, okay. Now this block is moving downwards and as this, as this block moves downwards, this wedge moves towards the left, okay. So, there is relative motion coming up. Okay, so what should be the value of kinematical constants here? So let us try to solve this. Okay, here also mu is zero. Okay, so let me separate the wedge and the uh, block. So for this wedge, this is like this, and this theta. This wedge moves towards the uh, left with an acceleration say a. Okay, then the normal force acting on the wedge due to this um, block of mass m is given by n. Okay, and if you resolve this, okay, so what you will get is this is theta, this is theta, this is theta, this is m sin theta will be equal to m into acceleration of this body. So this is the limit of this one amount. Okay. And there is no other thing to get from this wedge. Now let me take the block. Okay, so if you take the block and let me try to find out the equation. Okay, say this is the block which is resting on the end line and it is having a mass small m. Uh, and uh, this is the theta. So the normal force acting on this mass small m due to this uh, wedge is this way. And its weight is downwards, and b. Now, since this block is moving downwards, okay, and as this block moves downwards, the wedge moves backwards, okay. That means to an observer who is standing here on this wedge, to an observer who is which who is standing on the way, he sees that this block. Feels a, for, for, feels a force in the forward direction as this wedge moves backwards as this wedge moves backwards this observer who is standing on the wedge sees that this block feels a force in the forward direction 
which I show it by doing some kind of wobbling lines. It is m into a. Okay. So uh, let me write the equation for this. Okay. If this is theta, this is uh, theta, and uh, I can say this is theta also can be cos theta and this can be sin theta. So I can say from there. M B sin theta plus M A cos theta will be equal to M e to A prime. This A prime is the acceleration of this block with respect uh, okay, to an incline and it is being observed by an observer who is standing on the incline. Okay. And the next equation, I say give it equation number 2. Next equation is going to be like this m plus uh, the perpendicular component of ma will be ma sin theta. Okay. ma sin theta x along n and this is being this is being balanced by m cos theta. M cos theta. Give it equation number three. So you can see from equation one, two, and three, we have uh, I think three unknowns. The first unknown is m. Second unknown is a, and the third unknown is a prime. See, we have three unknowns and we have three equations. So I believe we can solve them. Uh, but here I am not going to solve it. Okay, and this will be left as an exercise for you. But I will give you the values of a and a prime. Okay, and uh, the value comes out to be so. Let me uh, give the value of a and a and a prime. So the value of a, if you solve, comes out to be. mg cos theta sin theta by m plus m okay m plus m sin square theta this uh, is the value of a okay which i write in the box the value of a prime okay comes out to be b sin theta into m plus m by m plus m sin square theta this is the value of a prime okay and how do we get the value of n we have got this we have got this how do we get the value of n we put the value of a see n sin theta will be m into a we put this value of a here and you can get n so if i put what should i get n is equal to from 1 m by sin theta into mg cos theta sin theta by m plus m sin square theta okay so ultimately you see sin theta sin theta gets cancelled out and what remains here is just uh, i am very busy with the yes so this is what remains so this is the third arm which i have got okay so this is these are the you try to solve and you get this answer. Okay. Now just let me take a special case. What if this wedge is infinitely large? Uh, it means it is it is having very large mass. Then what should be then m by m should tend to zero. If this is very large, then this ratio should tend to zero. In that case, what should be the value of a? So and you can see from here what should the value of a? I can try m is equal to mg cos theta sin theta by m into one plus m by m sin square theta. But m by m tends to zero, so this tends to zero. And moreover, you m so this tends to zero. So I can say a tends to zero. Then what will be the value of a prime? If m by m tends to 0, then what will be the value of a prime? So let us try to find out here itself. a prime will be equal to b sin theta by 1 plus m by m. You can take uh, m common. So I'm similarly from the denominator, you can take m common. It will be 1 plus m by m sin square theta. So you see this tends to 0, this tends to 0, 
cancels out. So what remains is G sin theta. And this is a special case of motion. When this equation is infinitely large, okay. And this, if you remember, in the when I began this problem, I as a warm-up exercise, I asked you if this m was if this mass was fixed, and if this m was moving down, what what it should be the acceleration? This is what we found out. Okay, so you can see here uh, we got the same result again. Also, I am asking you uh, as an exercise, I want you to find out the relation between. Okay, find out. The relation between okay a prime and a. I want you to find out the relation between a prime and a. Okay, from those equations from one, two, and three, and you can use these values to find out the relation between a prime and a. Okay, and the answer uh, which you will get. Okay, uh, we, uh, you can verify the answer. The answer which you get will come out to be. m plus m okay cos theta is equal to m a sorry i'm sorry m plus m a is equal to m a prime cos theta so this is what you get m plus m into k theta is equal to m a prime cos theta so this is the answer which you shall get and there is a there is there are interpretations to physical equations in physics okay this is not an not a hidden fact uh, this actually is a statement of the conservation of momentum and maybe in some other classes i can discuss okay okay mm. okay say if i draw uh if there is less space okay just here if a is moving if the weight is moving towards the left with an acceleration a and if the weight is moving okay downward with an acceleration a prime then by the way uh, a prime is the acceleration is observed by an observer okay who is on the wedge okay then how does it affect a person on the ground so if, if a is the acceleration of or an observer who is on the ground and by the way this angle is theta then I can say, okay, this is uh, x, y, so I can say a x is equal to a x prime is equal to If this is theta, so this is power to theta, okay. cos theta. So this is what you will get in a minus a prime x prime is equal to. Okay, I have uh, okay, maybe max okay, just hold on. Just hold on. Let me drop this and let me take a nice space over here. No longer required now. So if the wedge is moving towards the left with the acceleration a, and if a prime is the acceleration of the block with respect to an observer who is standing in the wedge, then for a person around the acceleration is like this a, then the relation between these accelerations can be written as okay, look here. Ax is equal to ax prime that is equal to okay a cos theta minus a okay a prime cos theta minus a and a y will be equal to a prime sin theta So this is what it will get here. Okay. 
So this is x is equal to x plus theta minus theta and uh, y is equal to that is equal to a y prime. Okay. So I hope you will understood this much. Okay. Okay. Uh, I hope you have understood till now. Now let me go one step further. And let me tell this that uh, I have the same block and the mass in the wedge and this the block of mass m. Now I give you this to this system a force f, but here this force f is already known. Okay, before if you remember in the warm up exercise, I have uh, solved a problem where f naught was unknown, and I told that f naught is the value of the force. Okay, which uh, helps both the block and the and the wedge to move together. But here the thing is that here f is there, but f is given to us. We know the value of f, and uh, this m and this m they are now moving. They are having relative motion. So again, we have to find the value of kinematical constants. So let me solve. Uh, let me isolate this body. Okay, so this is theta a j. Here also mu is zero. This is theta. By the way, you can uh, solve this problem by using friction, for, uh, and it will be quite little bit uh, lengthy, not complicated lengthy. So I left, I leave it unto you as an exercise. Okay. So uh, now, see, we have this f which is acting like this, and the now the reaction force on this where this n, okay, which is being applied by this uh, block of mass model. So this is your theta. So like this, if you resolve, this will be n sin theta because you see, as this block moves downward, I am assuming this wedge is moving towards the left. Okay, that means even though there is the application of this force here, um, that means, but see, this block moves towards the right, that means uh, this force, the this produces a force on this which is greater than the force given on this by this. Um, by an external source f. So n sin theta of okay, your minus f should be equal to this is mass carried m into a. Okay, n sin theta minus this is equation number one. Okay, now take the block. If you take the block, okay, theta. Now this is really like the previous one. This is mg. We have uh, mg cos theta here, okay. and this is mg sin theta. And the normal force on this due to this wedge is upwards. Now, uh, since this is a, these are accelerated frames, if you have an observer here, he observed that this block okay, uh, gets a response from this wedge due to its motion in the record in the forward direction that means this block is getting a force in the forward direction and this this phenomenon is being observed by an observer who is standing here okay and similar thing should by giving m to a okay so how do we write the kinematical equations mg sin theta plus uh, this is theta then this is theta this is plus m into a cos theta will be equal to m into uh, so this is m to a prime. Second thing is n plus a prime is the acceleration of the uh, block which is being observed by this observer. Okay. As this block moves below the prime, it is continuously feeling a force in the direction also. Okay. And this MA cos theta is the component of that force when it is moving along the incline. And n plus uh, this is MA sin theta, which is acting along the n, that should be compensated by mg cos theta. This is equation number 2 and this is equation number 3. Please remember here that this f is known. Okay. So here, here are how many equations? 1, 2, and 3. We have 3 equations, and still here also the things, the picture is the same. We have three unknowns, n, a, and a prime. 
Here also I'm not going to solve this uh, values. You have to do it on your own. And I leave until the is the next value, but I give the values of n, a, and n prime. Okay. So which I've calculated earlier. So a prime comes out to be a prime. Okay. This uh, that is the acceleration of this block down the end as observed by an observer who is coming along the is a prime equal to mg sin theta cos theta minus f by m plus m sin square theta. This is what it comes out. Okay. And a comes out to be a is equal to g sin theta to m plus m minus f by m plus m sin square theta. So please check carefully what I have written. Okay, just write directly this should be f cos theta. Okay, so these are n. How do you get n? How do you get? So we have got this value, we have got this value. n how do you get? Just put the value of a in equation number 3 and you get the value of n because a is known, a is known. Just put the value of a in equation number 3 and you can get the value of n. Okay, so you can do it on your own. Let me take some cases from this uh, derivation. Okay. 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 Um, when we began our problem, okay, and when I said we are doing one more exercise, there I mentioned something very important uh, was that uh, because here f is given. Okay. If f is such that Okay, if f is such that, if f is such that f not equals okay, this this value, just check carefully. If f is such that. That means I am telling you if f is such that, um, okay, I should have written capital again, it's my mistake. Uh, if f is f g n theta, if f is such that f not equals m plus m g n theta, then what is going to happen? Please remember f not, what is f not? f not is that value when both the block and the mass they are moving together. Then I am asking you if both the block and the mass they are moving together. It means I sorry I mean that not in the warm x I, I told you that these two are fixed in order to calculate f not these two are fixed this is this is not moving separately and this is not moving they are fixed it means a prime down the entry should be zero if f not if f is under f not is the f and g can be done then we have a prime that is the acceleration of this block should be nil nothing nothing but zero Okay, try to understand this fact. Okay. And from where do I get this G tan theta? If you you can ask me this because I remember and uh, here I told F not is equal to M plus M into A and this A came out to be G tan theta. So I put the value of G tan theta here. So M plus M G tan theta. So just let me run this. Okay, I need some space. Okay. Now if I do more
modify this. If you try to modify this and bring F naught here, that F naught here. So what will what will I get? It A is equal to cos theta into g n theta into m plus n. So you can realize that m plus n into g n theta is nothing but F naught. So minus F by m plus n n square theta. So this portion will be using f naught. So cos theta into f naught minus f by m plus n n square theta. So this is the unit. I will, uh, I will show you in the results which I did earlier. I should have written this as A prime. This is A. Okay. So just enter change. This is A and this is A prime. So this should be this should be A prime. So A prime. Now what if okay. So I hope uh, you understood what I meant. Okay. If F is greater, so from this uh, thing, if F is greater than F naught. Then a prime comes out to be negative. Okay. And if f is similarly, if f is less than f naught, then a prime comes out to be positive, right? That means f naught is the critical force. Okay. And beyond which things are happening. Okay. So I can do a graph of uh, a prime versus f, and here somewhere should be f naught. Okay. If you put uh, these values and all, then you will calculate the graph will, from, will start from here, it will end up here, and then again it will be raised. Okay, so it will be it will appear like this. The graph of a, a, a prime versus f will appear like this, and f naught is the critical force. So this, uh, so this was the overall direction that I have done, okay, and uh, um, I want to stop here right now, okay, and there are so, it is an endless discussion, we can increase so many things, okay, I, uh, I can even say that, uh, I can imagine that this mass M can be a car and the wheels are rolling, that then we can go to rotational motion, and so, and, and so forth, okay, so this, uh, these are endless problems. What I wanted to show you through this exercise was that you can in your free time choose uh, examples which comes in your mind and try to write the equations. Try to interpret the thoughts into equations so that you might have a better understanding of physics and the things happening around you. Okay. You can interpret those equations via graphs. Okay. So this is one of the benefits of uh, studying physics. So, uh, so this is the rest of okay. So, thank you for watching.